I think it started. So today, I will basically talk about two problems. And the first problem is basically that I said that dynamic programming is quite fast. It still takes only some thousand calculations. But it's still, because we have millions and millions of sequences, it's too slow if you want really to solve the database with practical. And it's kind of useless because if you want to make an optimal alignment of two proteins that are completely unrelated, you ask, that doesn't really matter. You find a number, but it's, you don't care about it. You want to find what you want to do when you're searching. You want to find the, the proteins or the nucleotides or the genes that are related. And you want to ignore the rest. So there are methods to do that. So basically, uh, if you have to take some calculations here, no, sorry, I don't want to turn this off. So if you want to, so uh, dynamic programming takes uh, maybe 10,000 calculations per sequence, but if you have 10 million sequences in your database, then you have 10 to the 12 calculations, and this is a lot. So, Work. So you need a fast aggregate. And the, the idea then is to, is to use an aggregate that uh, is not guaranteed to find an optimal solution. And basically what it does is that it, it filters away all the parts of all alignments that are, I mean, well, identifies the parts that are possibly good solutions, that are good, that are good scores. Basically defining the, the, the diagonal elements in the matrix. So if you have a quick way of finding the diagonal elements, did you start? Then you can ignore the rest. And of course, the diagonal elements of is maybe one thousand to one million parts of the, of the sequence. It's just the parts that are, that are similar. Uh -huh. oh, it's um, so there are two algorithms that are somewhat used. Anyway, nowadays, basically, blast is the main thing that people use. And there are Modification of BLAST, more modern things than BLAST, the most better, but in principle, BLAST is the same thing. But I will actually, it's slightly easier to describe an older algorithm called FASTA, or FASTA, mm. that uh, just for uh, pedagogical purposes I will describe it also, but BLAST is way better. Um, so the idea is to use some algorithms that is less than perfect. But you find uh, it's not it's not guaranteed to find the optimal solution. You can't miss, miss some things, but it actually is fast. So as I said, what you want to do is to find diagonals. So if you have a good alignment, of course, a good alignment should keep things that are here. And of course, if you only look at the diagonal, you only have to do n comparison instead of n times n comparisons. So that was much, much faster. And uh, so if you can limit your search to a small number of diagonals and not all areas here, so like you don't have to look here or in some regions there. So of course, in dynamic programming, you waste a lot of time calculating scores here. And particularly when you, if, you, if you want to compare a sequence against a database, you waste a lot of time because like most of them Sequences you find there are basically have negative scores in your nothing. You, 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 you realize you find, can't, can't find a good score at all. So the whole, whole, whole matrix in that case is useless. Hmm. So the trick here is if, can you find the areas that are good? I mean, they don't have to, in this case, it's easy because someone could just ignore the ends here and you focus on the part here and you do it faster. But the, of course, it could be also the good alignment here and the rest is bad also. You don't know that. So this is local alignment. So by the first start, you, the, the trick is to you find some exact sub sequences. So basically the idea is like if you want to find a good alignment, if you go back to making a dot plot here, the dot plots as we showed the first thing, basically putting a dot when two nucleotides or two amino acids are the same. And in particular if you have a diagonal of several identical sequences in a row, several identical nucleotides. If you find it, and this you can actually find quite fast. So you can, 
I mean, it, it doesn't take defining all alanines in in this matrix doesn't mean that I have to go through and compare every line here. I can find all the alanines automatically. I can say I know I have an aline here, here, and here, and we have two tyrosine here, 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 etc. So I only have to do this. So I can find that, and then I can basically see where do I have the diagonals of many similar positions. I mean, that's next to each other. So in fast day, they do that. They focus on they somehow fill out the dot matrix in a fast way with some optimized cutoffs. So they then define what they call hotspots. Uh, so they basically are diagonals with identical sequences in this case. So they basically have the same amino acid sequences and they have to be of a certain length. And normally in uh, uh, for proteins the length is just two, for nucleotides you maybe have a length of six or something, but that's just this variable you can play around with. But normally I think in the process two. And uh, so basically what you do is that you have a table here that I have an al alanine in position 2, 3, 7, 11, 2, 3, 7, or, or, or this is nucleotide, 2, 3, 7, 11. Mm -hmm. This is an adenosine. Two, so I put in or every, every row where I have an alanine, I put in stars here. And I have a cysteine uh, cytosine in uh, position 1 and 8. Well, no, in 6, and guanosine in 1 and 8, etc. So I have this matrix that I can fill out very full, far for everything. You just go through this this table here. So I have a lookup table. I can, look at, I can do this once. This is fast. I only have to go through this here once. And um, so I have this, and I, of course, this is, I can do this with a very big table quite fast. And then I try to find every diagonal. So I find every row here that has, has more than uh, two, or my nucleus number six, matches in a row. So I find, I find the hot spots. I, find, I try to identify every, every line that has more than. Uh, uh, certain number of hits. In this case, if it was two, I would find this one, and I would find maybe why some left one, it's only one. And I can so I can and I can, and I can do some scoring, like normal alignment score, but there are no gaps in this. So I can find these gaps here, and then I can uh, say I have a set of these ones, and then I can try to put them together using dynamic program something else. So if I can do some calculation, so I find an idea that my optimal alignment should be this area, and then at the end, I basically take, okay, now I know that this is most likely an optimal area, or maybe I have to couple this, and then I can do dynamic programming in this area, but I don't ignore the, everything outside. So this is, this is of course, if this is just a small part of everything, I, I can save significant part of computational cost. So, uh, so first I find I have this basic lookup table. So I, I count wherever I have a certain amino acid or certain nucleotide, uh, and then I find pairs of these or number of these that are, are, are on the same diagonal without any gaps. Secondly, I take some score and I maybe take I think the default is you take ten, ten best scores in your alignment. Which of course is like, if it happens to be that your optimal alignment is not in included in this one, you will miss it. You will get a bad score. Uh, and then I combine the sub alignments into one alignment. So I basically try to put them together. Basically, they have to be, of course, look in alignment. Of course, if an alignment looks, I cannot combine that and that alignment. This will put together. I have to choose one of them. So I have to jump this one to this or that. So I have to try to combine them. Basically, you can use dynamic program here, but you, but you skip. You will, you will do it for the gap parts. You, you, Two parts there. And you score the gaps, and then at the end, for your best hits, you take a full dynamic programming in the limited space of this alignment that you score. Um, so, how, how much time does this cost? 
So to find a list, uh, basically you can do it by just going through your stickers once. Because <laughs> maybe, because you, or maybe, because you only have to look at your data here. I don't, because I know it basically. I don't have to. Every, I don't. As soon as I know I have an certain amino acid in one position here, I can feel it. Oh, whenever whatever position here, I can feel it for every row there at the same time because they're all going to be the same. And even just going through the tables, the diagonals, so also I basically have to kind of just look here where, where do I have the diagonals. So I don't have to go through the whole matrix. If you store it smartly. And then in the third step, I have to do some combination, but this is, this is maybe much smaller because I have often, uh, I only have 10 alignments. I only have basically have to do 10, or in this case, maybe 10 square. Basically, I have to do the then the programming of ten of a matrix of ten, more or less. So if I only take just ten of alignment, so basically it's ten squared instead of n times n. It's much smaller. And at the end, of course, the thing that gets cost time is to do this part. It all depends, of course, how big this area is compared to everything else. But for a big alignment, it's of course a small part of the thing. So it's normally. Uh, at least uh, 10 or 100 times faster than dynamic programming. So as an example, it looks like in, 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 in real life. So you start here, and you get the two thicknesses. And you find all these diagonals. And you see that the diagonals are of like different lengths, and some, you get, oh, it's quite obvious, it's very identical. So if this is quite obvious what the alignment should be, it should be you, you go there and you go there and you follow this path here somehow. But of course, there are other alignments here and here that are off the that I look quite good. But if you, if you pick the 10 best ones, end up with maybe these. So still this one here in the middle of there, and all the short ones here disappear. But you have few that are off the ones. And uh, then you, but then you find, if you combine together, you can't really combine, oh, sorry. You can't really combine these and these together to get a good score, so you have to follow the path in the middle to combine them. And you end up with these six alignments here that you have. And then the last step, you do dynamic programming in this area. So this is maybe one tenth of the size of the whole thing. So you're going to be ten times faster. So first day was useful, but still it got too slow. So it's still, I don't know if it works today, I'm just using yes. So in 1990s, so a long time ago, people uh, started developing the method of BLAST. And there existed a BLAST version 1 that was actually uh, very fast, but not that accurate, because it basically did not use any gaps. It only used ungapped alignments. And uh, so and if you don't allow gaps, you have very, you don't get really good uh, alignment, you can't really do that much. But the key thing, they actually had good statistics. They had, they had figured out what is the statistical properties of an ungapped alignment. And then, so then in BLAST 2 was developed sometime in the mid 90s. And the key difference, one, a couple of key differences. One is actually the statistics, which has very good statistics. One is that if you remember this, the scoring matrices we had, that all the identities are not the same, as we asked before. So having a tryptophan, tryptophan is much better than having an alanine, alanine. So basically, and some of these are, uh, so they basically said that look, if you look for other types of identities, also not, not only the ones that are identical. So you have an isolation, loosening, substitution alignment to a tryptophan is good. So you have a set of, um, Pairs of amino acids that are good together, that are that are statistically significant. And this is usually starting your alignment. And then you use some other computational tricks. And also you do some pre-processing, which makes a big difference. We love to do we do some database and do pre-processing. But the idea is very similar. So you basically have often you have your um, Of, well, you, don't blast, you don't compare a single sequence to another sequence. You can compare one sequence to a database. 
and this was a normal case. But basically, the database is just all other sequences put together. So the database is big, your sequence is, 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 is small. So you start with basically a dot plot as a, as a prostate. And you have this, then you have lookups. You know, you look here for this uh, two or four or uh, uh, two amino acids or normally six nucleotides. And you know, okay, if I have ACGT here, I can find every case that I have ACGT or something else that is similar enough. So it, it gives a statistical significant score. So in nucleotides, I don't know if it's something else, but it, for, there are a number of cases for. I mean, acid pairs that are other, not just identities that are, that are conserved. So you end up exactly like in FASTA, you end up with a set of diagonals here. And then, you know, the next step is that you do extend these. So basically, you just keep on adding things without gaps on both things. And then you do basically like in FASTA, exactly, but you do in FASTA, you do local gap alignments. So you take alignments here. So it's very, very similar in this idea. I mean, one thing is here that this database will do the pre-processing on. So you can calculate, things. you can make, you make a list of every pair here where, where I have them. So you can fill it very fast. So this part here can be even faster, particularly when you now they're very good. Uh, and uh, then there are some tricks that it actually gets, it's actually better in many cases because you get because I have a better statistical model, you can get a significant score on how good the alignments are. So, uh, yeah. And that, well, it, it's, um, so the idea, the whole idea here is that things like you have, if you want to find a sequence that's homologous, you would like to find at least some region with high scoring word pairs. So we, call, we call it a hit in this case. So if you have a query word here, for example, you have, uh, if you have, a, uh, so you have a length of three in this case. So and you have PQG here. And so basically, and then for, for statistical reasons, you have a threshold which is up to 13. That means that every word in your database that is PQQ, anything that gives a score of 13 or higher, you're going to mark in your diagonal matrix. So you're going to, it's not only the, uh, you're gonna, you can replace the, um, uh, basically you can put an any charge stress you do here in the second position, but you see the proline has to be there and the glycine has to be there. So that's the only way to get a score of 13. So basically, it's not only the exact PQG, but it's anything P and then basically all, I mean, Polar amino acids in the second position. They all give good enough scores to be statistically significant. So we want to look further for them, not just identities. This means that we, of course, we have many more hits, but it also means we are much less likely to hit something else. But it also means that actually, the, well, some of this actually, if you have, maybe if you have alanine, 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 that is not very conservative, you actually have hard, hard you can't find anything that looks significant. Something that looks. Because if you remember, at least in the blossom matrix, alanine had a alanine substitution with alanine had a score of four. So three alanines in a row gives a score of twelve, so it's below the cutoff. So a PQG with the PSG is more has a higher score than alanine, 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 so than alanine, alanine, alanine. So that's there are um, uh, so but but that's just statistics, it's like that. So you do that, you take a query and you find all List of these words that are uh, scoring higher than this cutoff. So you see P word and you go through your sequence. And this is basically you have pre calculated and everything else. And then you have database, even this pre calculation block. Basically, you have to go through the database once. But often, if you do, because you want to search many different sequences for your database, that gives you a list of. Uh, all right. It's going to be fast the second time you do it. Uh, and in principle, your database is just a long, long sequence. So basically, all the sequences are concatenated together. But of course, you know where they start and end, things like that. Um, so yeah, so this is basically very fast. You find AEL, and you have, you know, where you have all your AELs. So you have to fill it up. So you have a table, pre-calculated everything else. So basically, you need to 
Pick a rate and define, okay, any bird will have AAA, have the position 1, 2, 15, 16, 2 million, 580, etc. So this is just keeping in, in memory. Therefore, some limitations. If you don't have enough memory, so on, you can take time, but it's nowadays not a problem. Uh, and then you try to extend this, so they basically just add the positions at the ends. So when you have a list of these words, you go through them all and you basically keep on adding without, until you, you can make it as long as possible before you drop below and start the score. So that is quite fast also. And you have statistics, I will talk more about that after the break, to see how significant it is. So basically, the score depends on the length and the number. So if you have a long alignment with a high score, it's better than a short alignment with a low score. So the, but that, they have a good statistical measure that depends on the score S here, and it also depends on the substitution matrix, etc. that depends on other fa factors. But there are good exact statistical methods for ungapped alignments, and they are quite similar to gapped alignments also. But that's so you have what you call an E value. So you stop this extension when the E value, which is E value means that expected probability that this occurs by random. Basically, the, the, so that's one of the statistical important measures to use in mathematics. So basically, how likely is it that I find this score in this alignment by chance? So it's a small E value means that it's very unlikely. So E value of 10 to minus 3 means that only if I do 1,000 try, tries, I find it once. So that means it's quite unlikely. But if it's an E value of 1, it means that on, thousand, on one try, I'm uh, supposed to find it. All right, given this data size, I'd like to find it once. So it also depends on how many tests you do. But I'll get back, get back to that. Basically, the formula is looked at that, but I'll do it more later. Sounds like we talk about the p value, which is basically. Not this one, but I'll get back to this later. So, this was an old, old example. So, this is you have a query of 153 sequences, you have a small database of 6,000 sequences. I think today, that today we have a database of 60 million sequences, so 10,000 times bigger. And in this test here, so then we're programming to 17 seconds. So, that would be 17 seconds is not a problem, but if we would take 17 sec seconds times 10,000, you start having to wait for some time. Fast day took a half second, 0.6 second, and blast took 0.1 second. And it's an well, old computer. Uh, but uh, today, basically, if you do blast a big database on a good computer, it takes maybe it can take a couple of minutes or so. It depends on the size and the length and how many hits you get, etc. It's a, it's not a second question any longer. So it's, it's a, so if you want to do to take a whole genome and blast against all data, it actually takes some time. So it's not uh, uh, unlimited. So basically, some of these algorithms are dynamic programming. Of course, you you can't see the optimal results, but it, it but it basically you waste a lot of computer time on getting scores that are not. At all relevant. Because it was useless area of alignment, but also a lot of useless pairs of sequences. False die, at least in the way it's implemented, basically skips this calculating into all these useless areas, but it still got actually every pair of sequences, which is still computationally expensive. But blast, actually, you can skip the calculation of many of the sequences. And it actually envies the database, it actually, because statistical reasons is actually often get better results. So somehow, Law stuff like that, it takes a database and it does experiences while fast it does takes each sequence here. And most of the sequences are completely useless, of course. That's kind of why you waste time on it. So actually blasts exist in a number of different methods, versions. You can do it for blast P, blast M, and blast X. So basically you can take proteins, so that's an easy way. Do we we do it in lab? You can you can have nucleotides. You can have a nucleotide against the, uh, uh, against the protein database. We can have a protein database, uh, no, or a protein against a nucleotide database. So you, you can do it in all different combinations of nucleotide proteins. But I do have the different programs that I use. But the basic thing is the same. But you, actually, you have to run it in a different way. So. 
So yeah, so it's 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 a useful. There are in in the reading instructions there are actually three things to read, and one is about the statistics I'll talk about later. But another part is is actually is um, just going through these different versions of these points. So there are a couple of different implementations. There are some new and modern things that are slightly more efficient, but this is still the ma main new things. And the lab later will use the web page, and then we'll think through answering it a few minutes normally. So, so I was going to plan to. Okay, so let's have a small coffee break. This is the one with my.